Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on the Lucas Horizontal Boring Mill and uh, trying to get this thing wrapped up where we can start using this machine for some jobs coming up here real soon. I've got the table installed on the saddle. Uh, we kind of dropped off there in the last episode on this. I still need to get the screw, the lead screw and handle put on here and a few other little odds and ends to kind of wrap this thing up. There's a locking uh, nut that goes on here that didn't have installed as well as go ahead and getting the uh, tailstock uh, base and everything over here mounted and ready to go as well to get the tailstock mounted on. Uh, probably won't get to all the tailstock in this episode. I've still got to get that cleaned up, but we'll go ahead and get at least the base mounted because it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, with that, let's get in here, pick up where we left off and get that screw installed and mounted on the machine. Next, we need to get the lead screw assembled and put back in here. Uh, if you guys remember, we did some work to this lead screw a while back. It's been quite a while back now. The uh, end on this, this was the original end that was on it. It was all boogered up, shattered up. The teeth were broken off of it. So we actually cut the old one off and I made a new piece. We welded it all back on here, remachined all this out and uh, got a nice new end on here that is uh, like it should be with a little spline cut in there for my uh, handle to go up on and be able to uh, turn this. So uh, anyway, got that done. Also, this, it has some thrust bearings that uh, kind of sandwich into this piece here on either side. And they were, you know, 100 year old thrust bearings, but fortunately, uh, these are still made. Uh, these were SKF bearings. I was able to find the uh, part number on them. And um, we were able to order some brand spanking new uh, SKF thrust bearings uh, to replace those with. So we're gonna be putting those in place and just reassembling this. And to start with, um, what's gonna, we're gonna need to do is Thrust bearing goes on the back here. Um, you got this piece in here that this, this fits up into. You got the ball bearing cage in there. So first thing I need to do is put this on. And I think I remember it kind of, yeah, it kind of goes up onto a fairly tight fit right there. Um, I'm going to have to probably tap that on it's wanting to go it's just a, it's a tight fit so let me uh, let me get something to kind of bump that on there with and um, we'll go ahead and assemble this thing so I just got a little brass hammer here All right, and the uh, bearing cage fits up in there. And then this piece comes in behind it and we kind of got a uh, little bit of a bevel fit there. This whole assembly here fits up on there and basically sandwiches between these two thrust bearings so this should go right on. There it goes. About like such. And then we'll have the other thrust bearing will come on the front of this. And the first piece will go up in here again. It kind of fits up on that bevel. Kind of dished out in there. This piece comes behind it like such, and it should find its own center. I think there is an oil hole up on the top of this to lubricate this bearing, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little oil in here to begin with. And we'll go ahead and put some, a couple of drops in here as well. 
this actually fits up on that surface. Let me get that seated on there. This brass hammer is softer than the material I'm hammering on, so it shouldn't damage it. But that's got it seated on there. And that's seated in square with this piece, so uh, it will fit up on there. And then this just um, screws up on there. I'm going to try using a strap wrench here. Seems like most of the time these things are kind of worthless, but every now and then you find a job that they've worked out just right on. I'm hoping this is going to be one of those cases. So I got that rubber strap on that front there. And it's giving me just enough, just enough torque to tighten this thing up. And it's getting looser now. It's had a little rough spot in it, those threads. And I think we got it tight there. I think that is where we want it. Yeah, we don't have any end-to-end -end play. Those uh, bearings seem to be doing what they need to do. So I think we got it. So we got a set screw there that tightens up. There's a little piece of uh, brass in there to protect those threads. Let me get a different wrench. Lock that in place and should be it. In case anybody out there needs this same uh, thrust bearing for a Lucas uh, Model 31 horizontal boring mill, there's the part number. It's an SKF part number 53209. Uh, I think it's ironic that these bearings here are over 100 years old. They were, you know, this machine dates back to about 1917, 1918, and uh, we're replacing the original bearings, and you can still go out and order them today. So, uh, yeah, good job, SKF. Those were SKF bearings originally, too. If I remember right, the part number was a little bit different. I had to look it up on some uh, conversions. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is an SKF. It's originally a number 60, uh, but that part number has changed. But I was able to uh, do some research and, and find, find the exact same one uh, based on the dimensions uh, as the originals. They just, uh, all that changed in 100 years was, uh, was the part number. I'm going to use the gantry here to help support this lead screw while we get it started in here. Um, see, it needs to come down just a little bit. It's pretty close. And I think we got it started. So I'm going to get my crank and put on the end, and we'll start cranking this thing in. up just a touch, maybe not, all right, we've gotten to the point where there is a key in there that has to be lined up with this keyway and that's going to be a challenge. I think I can look in from the back side of it and kind of get it lined up. Again, I probably need an extra hand here to really do this, but we'll make do. Once I get that key started, we should be able to screw that the rest of the way in. So guys, what I'm doing here, there's a gear in here that has that key in it, that worm gear that we looked at in a previous video. And I got to get it lined up and timed where it'll engage that rod as it's coming through. Now I can come through here with a flashlight and look right down on the end of this thing. And there's a bar right here that actually I can turn that gear. So I'm in here kind of lining them up. Ah.
and it's kind of a delicate act. I wish that I had another person here that could be turning the crank on the other end because I'm going back and forth and chasing my tail, but we'll get it done. Maybe, hopefully. Let's see if this one will catch it. So, all right, let me go back to the other side. Well, it took me a few minutes, but we got it. She's going in now. So we're just going to screw this uh, all the way in, and then we'll uh, bolt this uh, collar to the table, and then when you move this in and out, it should move the table in and out. So uh, we'll get it up there and get this bolted up like it needs to be. Take this strap off. Turn this up. And we got some bolts here. It should line up and uh, bolt that in place. Got it back together. Look at here. Nice and easy, just like we want. Comes back just fine. Everything seems to be working good. Uh, let's fire it up and try out the uh, power feeds and see how those work. There it goes. Back the other way. Looking good. Of course, the uh, saddle will move in and out on power feed. We'll reverse it. Go back the other way. I like it. I like it. All right, looks good. Well guys, I think we got the table uh, all wrapped up here. We got the screw back on, it's working good. The power feeds are working good. The cross slide's working good. The, the saddle's working good. So this is checked off the list. I think this is pretty much done. I do have one thing left that I need to put the lock up on, table lock up underneath the bottom here. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but we're ready to move on. Let's get the table lock put in and let's also go ahead and get the um, tailstock mount on the machine. Uh, we still got to get the tailstock ready, but I, I can go ahead and get that put on here and kind of button up the, the top of this machine. And also, I want to introduce you guys to the new shop dog. This is Maggie. Uh, I'm probably hearing her running around and seeing her running around the video, so I thought I would point her out. You know, we lost Elliot, my uh, lab golden mix, a couple of months ago. My wife and I finally decided we needed to get a new dog around here so uh, we picked this one up this actually came from my buddy Jim Bollinger down in Florida at do right fabrication of the youtuber uh, they had some puppies uh, this breed is a Shepsky it's a cross between a, a uh, Australian Shepherd and a Siberian Husky and uh, he had a mama and daddy Shepsky they had 10 puppies we're looking for homes for them and uh, we brought one home and this little girl Maggie she is going to Probably be hanging out here in the shop with me, but uh, at the same time, I think my wife has pretty much decided she's going to also stay in the house with us instead of being an outside dog. So uh, we'll probably be seeing some of Maggie down the road. Introduce new shop dog. Say, hey, Maggie. Is 
this is the uh, casting that goes up on the end here that the tailstock sits on. You raise that up just a little bit. Get that on the ways. There we go. Now we've got this gear. I'm going to have to slide it out a little bit and kind of get this going up on there. There it goes. There we go. All right, I want to get this gear kind of up in there where it'll slide and we'll get this rack over the pinion or that little worm over that gear. Got my handle and put on here. There we go. And I think we've got it installed. Let me come down, get this strap out of the way. Got her in place. Now there's a cover here as well that supports all these uh, shafts on the end of the table. So all of those will kind of slide up on there. And down here there are two alignment pins and two bolts that kind of hold all this in place. I'm going to take a brass hammer here. There it goes. I got those kind of started up on those pins. And we got a couple of bolts here that hold these in place. Go ahead and get those started. And that's pulling them both. Because of those alignment pins, this is just uh, kind of snugging them right up. It's pulling uh, both sides in simultaneously right along those alignment pins, those dowels. So up next here, we want to put the gib in, and uh, it just basically, this is a flat gib again, and it's going to just slide right back behind this, and there are four screws that will screw in here, kind of press into those little indentions that are in there that will hold it in place, and you can adjust this gib by adjusting these screws. One is tightening up. I'm just going to leave it a little bit loose right now until I get them all in there and then we'll kind of adjust this thing. Two of them in. These have the jam nuts on them. So once you get them adjusted where you want them, you just tighten this uh, jam nut up and that will lock that screw in place basically. that too tight and I do so we'll uh, kind of loosen these up just a little bit on all of them what I did is I basically tightened it down and then I'm going to loosen them up and that's pretty good right there so we'll get another wrench and uh, tighten those up
good. So next I got the plates uh, that go on the bottom of this that capture this, keep it from lifting up. So we got some bolts for this. Go ahead and put them in. There's uh, three on the front and three on the back. And on the front side here, there's also a lock where you uh, tighten it up and it squeezes up against the bottom and kind of holds it into place. So we'll get all those put in here. make sure yep we can still move that fine and then this is the lock piece and there's a hole right here for it we'll put it in so when that is locked down That locks the tailstock. You loosen that up and it moves. All right, I got another uh, plate that goes on the back side. We'll get that installed and I think we'll have this one knocked out. Well, just like on the tailstock over here on the table, there is a uh, lock that screws in on the bottom as well. So we're gonna go ahead and put that one back in. It's the same exact type setup. It just uh, pulls up on that bottom plate and it locks the uh, saddle in. So when you're working on something, you need to lock your table down. This is, uh, in, for all intent purposes, your table lock. So let me get this one in. And we got a little handle here that fits up in there and that should lock it in place and uh, loosen it up. All right, got that knocked out. Well, there we go. I think we have all of our uh, pieces now back down onto the, the main uh, ways of the machine. So we got the saddle on here. It will travel up and down uh, the, the part. So let me see here. Yeah, that's moving it by hand. I can either control it here on the at this point or I can come down to the end of the table and uh, control it down here um, we've also got the cross slide Again, I can control it right here on the front I can also control it uh, is it here no nope. well there is a auto feed I guess that's the only place I got to control it well, I can control it from the end. Yeah, I can control it down here. Um, I gotta make this shaft where it'll clear. I gotta fix that at some point, but if I turn this one, it will actually feed the table in and out. And then I've also got uh, the, the tailstock saddle on here. Uh, I can adjust it. its position here and uh, the height of the tailstock will be controlled by this bevel gear in here, which is driven by this outward shaft, uh, or it can be controlled up here on the front. I can do it here. When I crank that, it's gonna turn that, that bevel gear, which will then turn, move the tailstock up and down. So I think we are looking good. Right now, the next step on this project is I need to get the tailstock uh, just cleaned up and, and painted. It's uh, still in its original condition. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything that needs to be reconditioned on it uh, or rebuilt or anything like that. Uh, but I do need to get it, the, the old paint stripped off and it painted and mounted back over here on the on the machine. 
Uh, we will need to check the alignment to make sure that when we put a uh, boring bar on here that it's parallel to the table. Hopefully we were not going to have to make any adjustments there. Really the only thing that we sh might have to do is put some shims in here to get everything in alignment, but we'll, we'll check that. We'll figure out how to check that and uh, a little bit later on once we get that ready to go. So I'm going to work on getting the tailstock cleaned up and uh, yeah, once that's done, we can probably start using this machine. Uh, like I have mentioned before, at some point in time, I do want to rebuild the spindle in this, but I, I, I got a couple of jobs I wanted to use it for first, but it'll be fine for now, but eventually we want to rebuild the spindle and probably rescrape the column in over here uh, to just kind of finish the job up. But uh, like I said, right now, I, I, I got a couple of jobs we need to use it on, so we're going to go ahead and, and use it for that. So, guys, with that, that's a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, and a big, huge thank you to all the supporters out there who support the site on Patreon, PayPal, etc. Could not do everything we do without your help. And with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.